What's going on about the rumors with Neo and Apple? Most likely you've seen those images floating around the net already, showing the Neo website and the newsroom, which has a new release showing the Neo ET7, the Neo logo, as well as the Apple logo and the title, a new frontier in EV technology begins with Neo and Apple and showing the date 18th of December, which is also the Neo day. Now, of course, such kind of screenshots can be faked very easily. So either it could be a Photoshop, but I would say the much more easier way is actually to do some editing directly within the browser and using some HTML and CSS and just changing the dates as well as the pictures and uh, the titles here. Uh, and it also seems to be a bit sketchy here that NEO is not written in capital letters, which would be the CI of the company. And so while this might be rather a fabricated screenshot than an actual glitch on the website, um, we still have to see that this is not the only screenshot floating around. So there is also another one. This is actually also on a Windows system. And so, well, it seems like somebody at least is trying to um, yeah, make this rumor very credible here. So while this rumor is very speculative, let's still make this video about, well, what could be the potentials of this corporation? How likely is it? In which area could they actually work together? And so kind of summarizing my take on those rumors here. Well, first of all, I would say that those two companies, Neo and Apple, have quite some things in common. Of course, the design language and the premium to luxury positioning. And furthermore, one could also argue a similar company strategy, meaning manufacturing is outsourced, a tendency towards lean design and simplification, as well as a heavy emphasis on sustainability as well as lifestyle. And I would say they have even a very common ground on the topic of the business model. If you remember my last video where I talked about NEO's um, customer lifetime value focus and how that is different to the rest of the industry. We can also look at this article here, which basically describes um, types of goods that result in a demand increase as the result of a price increase. So that is in contradiction to the law of demand, whereas the price of the good increases, there is a correspondingly drop in demand. And the article mentions the iPhone as a typical example of such a Wemblen good, because while the number of iPhone devices sold worldwide has been risen since the introduction, yet also the prices have increased, demonstrating this kind of a Wemblen effect. These type of goods are actually classified by two types of effects. So the first one is actually showing that the person who owns it is not perceived as a member of the lower class, so typically buying a product that is not cheap and thereby showing that one off. But at the same time, it can also mean the desire of a person to be perceived as a member of the upper class. So kind of um, two effects going to, towards the same goal. And I would argue both Neo as well as um, Apple are kind of falling within those classes. And so this can have the effect that people are actually on the demand curve um, willing to pay a premium for their products, owning Apple, owning Neo, instead of that um, the products are getting cheaper and cheaper over time as the demand increases. So this is also why I've previously outlined that NEO is not in the business too much of the declining cost curves. Instead, they are trying to um, kind of retain the customer lifetime value and generate as much as um, economic um, productivity and power through their branding and positioning. So, okay, there we have it, two companies that are operating similarly, but would this justify that they actually come together and do something and announce this possibly on Neo Day or not? Um, well, you could also argue that, of course, since they are so close together, but now that Apple possibly also wants to break into the market of autonomous cars or EVs in general, um, they could also be competitors, right? So why would it make sense that they actually do something together and announce something? So this is the English invitation for Neo Day um, taking place in Sutra on the 18th of December. And of course, there isn't much information about it, only while well, the slogan or motto, Hello World. Now this Hello World slogan is something that Apple has used in the past when they had the return with the Macintosh. And in general, in programming, this is one of the first lines of codes that you would put out there. And so it could have something to do with software. This is of course also why Apple uses this Hello slogan for the WWDC. And in general, even under Tim Cook, this seems to be a topic going forward. 
but this could still be some kind of neo copies apple you know as the chinese are always copying the good stuff in the west and you know first of coming up with such kind of um, a neo day which is also in a way really much like uh, apple is presenting themselves and as we know people are getting less and less excited about these apple events because apple is not showing any technological innovation breakthroughs anymore while neo day has really attracted lots of attention in the last couple of years and so maybe even the slogan here is just a very cheap knockoff of kind of following the path down the line as apple did but anyways let's just go down the rabbit hole and think that this is actually real and they have this ET7 here on the front page and a new cooperation between NEO and Apple that will be unveiled on this NEO day. Uh, what could it be about? Like if this is about software, is NEO really lacking software for their autonomous driving, for the in-car experience? Or could there be ways of integrating some Apple services into the NEO ecosystem? Well, I would argue that NEO is not lacking software capabilities. Uh, in fact, they are, I think, uh, doing really well industry benchmarking wise in this sector. Also, they're pushing frequent software updates, increasingly um, reamped their design, making it better. And also um, really uh, from a design perspective, also um, very usable, uh, even now localizing for Norway and possibly also their um, entry into other markets into the future. And so I'm not really seeing a big collaboration here with NEO on the software side. What would be the benefits for Apple? I would say there is not much to contribute. They have their in-car OS, uh, which is also standard in many other cars. So, well, yes, that, that might be something which they could add on. Um, but that is nothing uh, super special in my views. What about the hardware side? And I think here it's a bit strange that they show the ET7 picture, which I think is another clue why this is just a mock-up here and not real. Because um, if Neo would to collaborate on, let's say, the Apple car, then I would say this wouldn't be about the ET7 because the ET7 clearly isn't the Apple car. But still, there are some interesting thoughts around this. Uh, first of all, maybe Neo Park, which will have a capacity of up to 1 million cars and even more in the future, uh, might be some sort of the Foxconn 2.0 in terms of producing, maybe not only on the demand of NEO but also other companies and maybe with NEO steering uh, the design and uh, organization and the uh, um, manufacturing processes and so on which could actually well be well in line with Apple searching for partners to actually build what they have produced or come up with. Also, we still need to have in mind the secret project Gemini by NEO for which we don't know much yet other than it will be around 60,000 cars and your capacity. So much we know from their um, applications of building a new line actually for that one. We know that the ET7 will be released next year. We know that the ET5 is quite likely, but there is also a, another car project that is going to be, be released, possibly the Gemini. And maybe that could also be, well, you know, a car for another manufacturer. Because frankly, I think Neo is much more than just this car manufacturer. I think they are from the setup which they're using with the outsourcing of the manufacturing and also the in-house design capabilities. I think they would be open uh, of uh, having such type of collaborations. Uh, we also need to remember that XPT, which is a neo wholly owned uh, company, is producing those um, EV skateboards, meaning uh, the battery, the battery management systems, the drive drains and uh, the suspensions and everything. And it's even rumored to be selling those uh, to uh, Axpong, uh, so producing them for their behalf. And why not also bringing these to other platforms or other manufacturers that can be using uh, this kind of uh, vehicle platform and build their own uh, car on top of it in a way. And such kind of faults around the manufacturing as well as the vehicle development and launch is actually a little bit backed up by the fact that there are various employees shared between Neo and Apple. I think Felix Finance summarized it very well today. So people who are working at Neo, who were previously at Apple and vice versa, there are about 110 of them. One or two stick out particularly. This lady here, Helen Wang, she was the senior procurement manager at Apple for 14 years in China, so in charge of all the supply chain. And she's been since June this year at NEO. Okay, so people are saying, well, if she's, you know, been handling Apple's 
supply chain in China for 14 years. She's kind of instrumental. She knows how everything works. If she's now moved over here to NEO, maybe NEO is the new supply chain for the Apple car. We also have this chap here. Again, head of supply chain leader in San Francisco this time, uh, Rock Chen. He is at NEO. And for the previous seven years, he was again at Apple. Now, does that mean a lot? Well, who knows? Now we have this chap, supply chain product manager, again, presently at NEO. Before that, was at Apple. Okay, so 10 months ago, similar timing implies some hiring there. We then have Zikay Akbai, which I'm undoubtedly mispronouncing, chief engineer, vehicle safety and compliance at NEO. And he apparently has some Apple links. Here we go. Safety and compliance at Apple for three years. Then he was at Uber. Now he's at NEO. Well, is he? Well, he's more like in, in, a freelancer at NEO, I would say. Okay. What about this chap here? Jamie Carlson, special projects at Apple. Now that sounds a bit more exciting, doesn't it? And so, of course, especially Jamie Carlson here is very interesting with the fact that he worked for Tesla, special projects for Apple, then very long time for NEO, and then special projects for Apple again. But on the other hand, I would say it's also not something very uncommon that uh, people jump to ship and go to other companies uh, within this industry. We'll see it also between BMW, Tesla, Volkswagen and Apple involved and uh, startups like Canoe, which are hiring from each other. So those links between those people are definitely existing and nothing super unusual. And at the same time, we need to be aware that NEO was on the verge to bankruptcy and had to close their San Francisco office or let uh, go lots of people. And so has now in-house capabilities in Beijing rather regarding the self-driving capabilities and algorithms. And so um, this is not automatically an indicator that Apple and Neo are working on things together here. We also see this in the rumors about the Apple cars. So Apple lost three key engineers. So I actually also uh, tweeted about uh, Michael Schwekoch here who left Apple. Before that, he was actually hired from Tesla where he was a high ranking engineer. Uh, but at the same time, Apple also brought on like Ulrich Kranz coming from Canoe. So all this tells us these kind of overlaps are quite usual. At the same time, this Apple car project seems to be not going very straight, but it also is not completely called off, it seems. So to conclude on this point, I wouldn't rule out that um, Apple and Neo are doing something together on either the hardware side as well as on the autonomous driving side, uh, the way these, these two companies are um, made up and how they are working. And at the same time, seeing those fluctuations and um, those overlaps between um, uh, key stuff. But on the other hand, uh, these are not really um, big indicators for it. Um, this is not, these are not hard facts. And also some people have pointed out rightly so, um, if this would be true, then there is a bigger likelihood actually that some of this would have leaked some way and possibly also would have already reflected in the stock price. However, yes, there are so many shambles and uh, people playing with the stock price these days um, that we cannot also even say that with certainty. Now, another interesting area where those two companies could work together is around the topic of lifestyle and environment. This morning, I actually watched a Tiger Brokers um, webcast. They had a fidelity manager on talking about investing in Chinese ADR and also in those kind of uh, different innovation themes and topics. And by the way, I have fully recorded this session and uploaded it into my Patreon network. So if you want to watch this whole webinar with some couple of interesting slides there, um, just sign up with my patron and you'll find the link. So what is interesting here is that he mentioned that these are those uh, specific China innovation themes, namely innovation and technology like AI, digitization, automation and robotics, future mobility, and then lifestyle innovation divided by health, wealth, wise. So that's more about education and environmental innovation. And I would really argue that uh, along with these topics, all of them fit to NEO. NEO is working on the AI side regarding their in-car experience with Nomi, the digital assistant, regarding autonomous driving. They are on the forefront of automation and robotics. Um, they have just invested in a 3D printing company. They have the latest manufacturing technologies in China, even some kind of a gigapress. Very lean, very environmentally friendly, uh, very top-notch production. The future of mobility, of course, I would say that um, NEO really is kind of the case study from 
China regarding what future mobility will look like. And then, of course, with Neolife, the area of lifestyle innovation, which is going into the areas of a healthy, more upgraded consumption uh, lifestyle wealth. So that's what I also just mentioned about um, you know, this uh, branding and perception and positioning of NEO and well, also education in a way and, and environmental protection with a carbon emission free uh, mobility and also what NEO is launching in the area of recycling of batteries with the whole um, battery swapping system that can basically swap out faulty batteries and then um, recycle what is left with them make new battery packs and swap it in back into the fleet. And so especially those lifestyle and environment protection themes here, I think would really fit well between Apple and Neo. For example, this is one of the Neo Capital investment, which is basically a fitness startup with this kind of products that are actually looking very Apple-like, which help people to use technology to work out. It fits very well with the Neo Life approach and also in the customer segment that both Neo and Apple should be op operating in. And then, of course, we have the whole topic about new retail, new houses. Um, of course, the new houses are very similar to Apple stores in, in the way that they are set up, in the way that they are positioned. I just tweeted out today that this is also interesting given what kind of people Neo is hiring. So here, Alexander Schwartz is the new CEO of Neo in Europe. And his CV is basically coming from eBay, then going to PayPal and then becoming the general manager of Airbnb in the German, Austria, Swiss region. And so, you know, having these kind of personals coming onto the company, which are clearly not automotive executives, tells you that NEO is so much more than just a car company, which is also reflected in the NEO Capital investments. For example, this one is a software um, business solution uh, company that NEO has invested in. Another one is uh, a company that is offering business services. And then this one, which is about um, social marketing, as well as building the e-commerce backend um, platform. And so this would be completely independent from the actual car, right? Rather about the, the full customer journey, the experience of a NEO owner. And well, there are some quite interesting connection points to Apple as a brand, as a consumer product, uh, maybe in the area of mobile working, which is also a way of mobility. So given the Airbnb general manager now coming on with Neo possibly um, building those communities in Europe or maybe even some kind of a WeWork type of business in the entire world. And these are aspects I think where also the Apple brand could connect to and where they could possibly do something uh, together, although that may not be on the hardware side, not even on the software side too much, uh, but where they may have some overlap and common goals in terms of um, serving this customer group, but also on the sustainability and privacy lifestyle, uh, where also Apple, of course, has a big interest, uh, as we can see lately by those news um, about um, having a piece of the pie in China. And I think, uh, of course, NEO is kind of um, leading the way there of uh, de deploying and uh, investing and also scaling those kind of business models that I think uh, people don't really see yet because there are unique type of innovation businesses coming from China and different trends that I think will emerge in China actually and then later on go to the world. And so overall, as you can see, there's quite a bit of overlap. There's quite a bit of speculation where they could work together. Not really something concrete there. Um, also lots of reasons why there shouldn't be a collaboration. Lots of reasons why these uh, rumors are actually untrue. But uh, it's really not possible to kind of deny them at this current stage. And I think so. We'll only find out during Neo Day uh, what will be the truth to it. And so let me know down in the comments what you personally think about it, whether or not you're excited about it. And then, yeah, let's see what Neo Day brings. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.